In this video, we're going to make silicone rubber molds, wax duplicates, and cast bronze copies of LEGO Star Wars minifigs. And just as a preface to this video, I've done this process a thousand times, so I'm not quite sure what's boring or interesting to those unfamiliar. I'm trying to distill these videos down as much as possible, so let me know in the comments if you feel like I left some things out or added too much filler. In this first part, I'm making a basic box mold. This is the simplest type of mold at the expense of wasting a little bit of extra rubber. And it is exactly as it sounds. You make a box, set your desired molding item inside, and then fill it up with rubber. I add what is called a pour spout to the minifigure. This is the purple clay I glue to the back of the, the figure. It's hard to explain all these small steps and what their full purpose is in the moment, but if you follow along to the end, they will all make sense. The purple clay pour spout serves multiple purposes throughout the process. So here we're just mixing the rubber to fill the Lego box molds. And this rubber is smooth on Mold Max 30. I made this video once before, but I lost all of my footage, so I tried it again. You may notice different color rubbers or waxes or other materials, but they all serve the same purpose. I'm just mismatching some different versions of this project, and the minifigures may not line up either. Um, this is just an example of, of how to make the box molds and the rubber mold. Also, I bought studio lights partway through this project, but I didn't use them until the two minute mark, so forgive me for the poor lighting for this intro. Normally, people use a vacuum chamber to remove the air bubbles from the rubber before they pour them, but these figures are pretty simple, and Mold Max 30 is super viscous, so most of the air bubbles will rise out naturally. This is also what's called a razor cut mold, where I make strategic cuts to release the original minifigure from out of the rubber. In the next part of the video, when I make the wax copies, you'll see where there is a downside to doing this type of mold, there will be what is called flashings where the wax fills up these mold cut lines and creates extra pieces of the wax that are unwanted. And here you can see the negative version of the minifigure which is ready to, re to create copies. Here you can see a pot of the melted art casting wax which I use to make wax copies. For me, I get the best copies when I use a small plastic syringe to fill the molds up. It's like a primitive way to do injection casting. Here's one of the random material changes. In the previous clip, it was a more rigid, brittle red wax, and this is a syringe full of a softer brown wax. It's a little bit more mushy and forgiving, so it doesn't break so much when I'm demolding the minifigures. And I'm using this syringe to spray the melted wax into all of the tiny crevices like the hands and the bottom of the legs to get a proper duplicate copy. After a while of waiting for the wax to cool down, they're ready to demold. I ended up making a few extra relief cuts in the rubber to be able to get the wax out fully intact without breaking the hands or the top of the helmet. And here you can see what I mentioned previously called the flashings. These extra thin flakes of wax where the cuts were in the mold, I remove all of these manually before the next part of the process. I had the idea of adding stainless steel inclusions inside of bronze castings, so I thought keychains would be a cool example of trying this out. I bought some bulk keychains and removed the eye hooks from them. Once again, some of this may make more sense in the future or the further part of the process, but here's the basic idea of what I was going for. This process is called Lost Wax. You can find a lot of resources on it on the, the internet. Um, further along, all of this wax will melt away, leaving a void, which will be filled with molten bronze. These stainless steel eye hooks will be left behind and they won't melt away, like the rest of the wax. And when the molten bronze is poured into them, they will fuse with the eye hooks and be left behind as um, a sturdy structure to hook the keychains to. Now we've moved on to the part of the process called sprueing. Once again, this is lost wax, so all of the wax melts away, leaving a void. The spruing process serves two purposes. One, evacuating all of this wax matter, and then two, once that's done, creating directional channels to direct the flow of molten bronze. The next part of the process will show this off much more and it'll start to make a little bit more sense. These sprues also need to hold quite a bit of weight in the next part of the process, so I'm melting and fusing them together as much as possible so they're as rigid as possible. Unfortunately, once again, I lost a little bit of my footage, but this shows the same concept. The dark brown cylinder at the bottom is what's called the cup. Eventually, this is where all of the wax will melt out of, and then the bronze will be poured into. The light red wax sprues are the 
the future channels that will direct all of the molten metal into the wax lego minifigures. Also on this same sprue system I have two other video projects connected with it. The beef jerky looking thing is really cool, it's part of a tree branch that I molded and then inlaid back into the original tree branch. If the video for that is done I'll throw up an annotation, if not you should check back later, it's pretty cool. Once all the wax work is done, the entire sprue system gets a ceramic shell coating. This will be the final destination for the molten bronze. The first of these dips are in a liquid solution of colloidal silica. The liquid eventually evaporates away, leaving a small layer of hardened silica. These first dips are meant to get all of the fine nooks and crannies so you can get a perfectly detailed replica. This part of the process gets a little bit repetitive so I cut a lot of it out. The colloidal silica dip that you're seeing right here happens two times. That's to get the very very fine detail. They get set on a drying rack for a few hours between each dip. This part of the process takes, takes the longest in preparing for casting bronzes. Once you've captured the minute details, you want to start thickening up the shell coating a lot quicker. You begin each layer by wetting it and then adding progressively larger silica sand to build the layers up. There are still important details in the waxes left to be captured, so you start off with two coats of a super fine mesh sand. I'm doing this part all by hand, so I make sure to get sand coating every little crevice. Some people have aerated sand beds which you just dunk the whole thing into and it's much more efficient. This is where I started to cut out some of the repetition. The fine mesh gets two coats and now we've moved on to a medium mesh. This medium mesh doesn't really serve that much of a purpose, it still collects some of the details on the wax but mostly at this point we're trying to bulk up the ceramic shell. The medium mesh sand gets two coats and now we've moved on to the coarse grip. This part is pretty arbitrary, you just thicken up the shell to your preferred thickness, but now the main goal is making it strong enough to hold 1900 degree molten metal. Here I'm just cutting an opening in the cup of the shell. This is where the wax will melt out, and it open up, opens up the void for the bronze to be poured into. And hopefully you stuck around for this long, I feel like this is the point in the process where everything sort of clicks and all of the other previous steps really start to make sense. I hand it off to Jake, who has heat shielding on for metal pouring. He puts it in a furnace that's around 1200 degrees. This begins to melt the wax out and then eventually preheats the shell to get it ready to pour bronze into. Not everyone does this, but this is a pretty small operation, so we have a little bit of time. We use an air nozzle to blow flakes of shell, dust, or other contaminants out of the empty ceramics, and then they're ready to accept bronze. Once the ceramics cool down for a few hours, they're ready to break open, hopefully exposing all of your hard work.
Now I undo all of the gating system by cutting it off and then retrieve the now bronze copies of the Lego minifigures. There's still quite a bit of ceramic left, so they go to the sandblaster to get cleaned up. This is pretty cool. You can see where I originally put the eye hook into the wax, and now it's permanently fixed into the bronze. I hooked up one of the keychains to check it out. The sprue removal part was just a rough cut. Now I finish it off by removing the rest of the gating system on the back of the minifigure. If you remember to the first part of the video, this was originally the purple clay I attached to the back and used for multiple parts of the, the process. And finally, I do a little bit more cleanup with the cross pad. And here's the finished product. Invincible, bronze, Lego minifigures next to their plastic counterparts. If you like this, like and subscribe. I do weird metal casting projects and it's a lot of work. You can follow me on Instagram, if you have any weird bronze casting ideas, you can drop them in the comments. Maybe I'll do them someday.